when you're trans here, it's very different from being like trans in the North because there's more people there who are understanding, more open-minded because of less of a religious aspect. But living in the South, like being Christian is everything. If you're not a Christian, then like, what are you doing? So, and having that kind of um, Christian atmosphere all the time, it makes it difficult for people to know who they are. And if they go against what they've been taught, you know, it, they just, they don't get to understand because they're shunned and it can create a sort of hatred within oneself if you're not like the norm. With extended family in California, I never felt uncomfortable talking about uh, issues of like gay rights and LGBTQ rights with them. It was sort of just sort of one of those things that we could have as like common conversation. And it wasn't something I feared backlash for if I told them that like, oh, I have a girlfriend or um, I am experi uh, I'm experimenting with like gender presentation and things like that. It was never something I felt um, scared to talk about with them. But then in the South, my stepdad's family, uh, I am very much in the closet in all ways to them because there's really no common ground we have on that topic because they're very religious. They believe in gender roles. They believe in sort of this idea that God makes you perfect and you can't change anything about yourself. <laughs> It was hard to sort of come to terms with it because I didn't really understand much about being trans when I sort of started realizing that I might be. Um, and then growing up here, um, it's a lot harder to find people who are accepting. <laughs> and it's very difficult to sort of be uh, understood the way that I am. Like when I go out in public, if I uh, have a binder on or I have cut my hair short, people don't necessarily still they still refer to me in like female terms because they don't necessarily understand that I'm like actively making an effort to try and identify as not cis. <laughs> so it's been kind of difficult to find that sort of understanding that uh, I know some of my friends who live in other states have gotten, but. I think that being trans in the South is a very unique experience, especially if you grew up in the South. Even though I moved around a lot, it was primarily like within the Southern United States. And I think the views that, like the maybe more traditional views that sometimes I think aid in the stigma, it's just part and parcel of the process, which it's a sad reality, but it's the truth. So um, I think it's my hope that like changing mindsets and making people more aware because it's not as discussed and having more resources here in the South especially would be helpful for trans people in the future to know that they don't have to hide, that if they want to explore themselves that they should be able to do that safely. Well, I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. And while Louisville is a southeastern state, it's, it, or it, it, Kentucky is a southeastern state, um, we were a little further north, and of course my growing up years, it was never an issue because this wasn't a subject that was ever discussed. Uh, you know, I, I moved down here 40 years ago, and I was still having to keep my secret. Um, living in the South, from my perspective, I have not had any problems. Now, I do have many friends that, that have, have multiple problems, but when I began my transition, uh, I was already retired. Uh, I was married at the time and, and subsequently had, had divorced. Um, but I had been in business for a number of years. I had a lot of business contacts. I was a licensed CPA, so uh, even though I was retired, I still did some work that, that related to that. So I really haven't had a problem, and it's and, and that is a great uh, that is a great deal different than most transgender individuals uh, will experience. Uh, I don't I don't regret having my life's experiences, and and I feel like that those helped me navigate the very difficult years of of youth and what. It, 
with the confusion that I had. And, and uh, but then as I became an adult and had family, um, it was just something I had I had to deal with. It was a taboo subject, I think, growing up. It just wasn't really something that was talked about. If you heard of someone maybe on TV who was trans, they were maybe discussed a couple of times in conversation and it just wasn't revisited again. I never really knew what it meant, the full depth of what it meant to have the trans experience. And then I started exploring my own identity and working on educating myself was mostly a matter of looking to online resources. Nothing I have found so far here has been just readily available in the South. So I think it's something that's not talked about as much as it should be. Things aren't as visible. So I think that's definitely like the biggest factor. It was kind of, we don't talk about it. Um, uh, the term like, you know, slurs were thrown around every once in a while, but it was typically something we didn't talk about. The most I knew about were drag queens and like butch lesbians and stuff like that, but like those aren't trans people. And the only way that I was able to find out about that is I had to go online. I got my first smartphone when I was 14 and I downloaded Tumblr because I had heard about it from a couple of friends. And that was the way that I found out everything is from watching the people on Tumblr and on YouTube and stuff like that coming out. And it made it easier, but it was also really difficult because I wanted to talk to people around me about what I had found out, but no one would listen. So I just had the internet. I first knew at age five and a half that something wasn't right. I was in kindergarten and I came home crying and my mother wanted to know why and I said, well, I didn't get to wear dresses like the other little girls. Now, I don't know whether that scared my mother. <laughs> I don't know whether it just went across the top of her head, but I do know that uh, very shortly thereafter, the doll that I had uh, was missing and I learned very, very quickly what little boys could do and couldn't do and could wear and couldn't wear and, and how we were supposed to behave. Well, that, while that was all done from love with my parents, it was confusing for me. I was conflicted. And uh, as I got on through, uh, through elementary school, uh, that's almost like a blur, other than the fact that I knew I didn't want to play out on the playground with the boys. I wanted to be up on the on the hard surface with, where the girls were, jumping rope and and uh, playing hopscotch. I was those were sports that I was pretty good in, but I didn't get to didn't get to do those. Uh, this was never talked about. You have to understand, this was in the fifties, and and uh, the the first transgender individual that had surgery in this country was 1953, and um, and no one ever talked about that. Now she had a TV show, she had uh, she made uh, record albums, right? but but this just wasn't something that we talked about. My first experience with like ever meeting a trans person. Uh, she didn't even know she was trans at the time, so I met her when I was around four, and my first question to her was, are you a girl or a boy? Because I was just a very rude, blunt child. <laughs> and um, she didn't really know how to answer that. She just kind of told me that like some people aren't a boy or a girl, and she felt like she wasn't either. Um, and that was kind of like my only experience with it for a long time, um, until I got into middle school and my friend Alec transitioned and I finally found out found out like I like googled what it was to be trans and was like oh okay this is a thing other people experience and it's like not just me feeling weird and wrong. I was sort of estranged from my parent for a long time um, and for a long time I didn't know why until Valentine's Day two years ago she came out to me as trans. Um, it was a very touching moment because I'd never ever met anyone like me other than people online. And even then, online you're labeled like the snowflake. So it was very nice to find that I wasn't alone and that I really wasn't alone because it was someone so close to me. So 
Just recently for my birthday, as a special occasion, I came out to her as trans. Um, and she took it really well. She was very, very receptive, um, very polite. And um, it's really nice. It's really nice to be able to, to take this comforting life I have at Montevallo and take it to another home. I started my transition before Caitlyn Jenner began her. And it seems like that, that when, when, when Caitlyn started her transition, because of her uh, renown and, and uh, uh, celebrity, things picked up pretty quickly. But um, even though the year prior to that, when I began, uh, I started meeting individuals here in Alabama that were transgender, had already uh, uh, had their reassignment surgery, and that's not necessarily that's not what makes you transgender having your reassignment surgery. It may or may not. But I've met so many. But what's interesting is I I know no one today that is is a transgender individual that I knew before I began my transition. Completely it's a whole new realm of friends and so it's um I just I just think that um, I think that living uh, today is is very interesting. It, it's um, there there are some challenges, just like uh, the Senate passed a bill yesterday that's going to uh, have a great impact if it if it stands and if it finally becomes law, it's going to have a great impact on children today. And, and what people don't understand is this is not a new revelation uh, to be transgender. It's not choice. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. It's difficult. It's lonely. And it's, it's for a child that, that grew up as I did, it's, it's confusing. Children today seem to have a little bit more freedom I think it's the culture. I like to think they're not any smarter than I was, but they they live in this culture where things are more open. And and um, as my therapist said one day, um, she told me she says, you know, she said, you all are coming out of the woodwork, <laughs> and 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 that's true. But I think it's I think it's awareness in, in society today. We've always been that. I had to keep it a secret most of my life. And as as times changed and the culture changed and, and of course I, I think too that when the Supreme Court ruled on the uh, same sex marriage for the, the gay and lesbian community, that kind of kind of relaxed some of the attention on uh, of society on the, the gay and lesbian. And I think it started focusing attention on on another group that they could could uh, uh, try to hold back. It's a lot of experimentation, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Um, I'm working on, I think, walking that line between how I want to present myself and how I want the world to see me and how I want people who are close to me to see me. As a college student and especially as a person of color as well, I often struggle with this concept of the future because it used to be, you know, you're going to have risk. When you're young, you think you're going to have risk, but it's going to be okay. But now that things are getting closer and a lot more real, I think it's scary for me to consider the prospect of, oh, who's not going to hire me because of who I am? Who's going to bar me from entering a certain organization because of who I am? So I think reconciling those fears is the biggest thing that I'm dealing with now. But on the brighter side, there are also a lot of positives. I think especially being here in Montevallo has helped a lot because it is for the South a relatively accepting environment. I say that tentatively. but. I think it's been helpful to be able to just explore my identity without any kind of shame about it. I'm not ashamed of who I am, and so hopefully I can get to a place where I can reconcile those fears. It's a lot more, there's a lot more people here. It's like a concentrated uh, 
area where people can be sort of more accepting of that kind of thing. And out in public, I have had like people sort of mistake me for uh, just being like a, like a lesbian. And even that warrants its own kind of like pushback from people. Like uh, I've experienced obviously homophobia, um, transphobia, and mostly it's nothing and it's nothing violent but it is sort of it's one of those things that when faced with someone saying like kind of unkind words or yelling at me and calling me a dyke from their car window it's a little frustrating since coming here it's been a lot better coming to college um more people are accepting here because it's a liberal arts school um more people want to understand and want to know you and love you no matter who you are which is how I found some of my friends is that, you know, they want to know who I am. They aren't like my parents who only know a section of my life. So going home, it's really difficult because I'm forced to be one person that I'm not, but then coming back, it's a lot easier because I can be whoever I want to be. Presenting as a trans person for me has been kind of a, a, a long struggle I would say, because I used to be very uncomfortable presenting like anything feminine, because I used to think if I felt feminine or presented feminine, it meant that I was presenting female, which I know now isn't true. It's a lot more nuanced than that. But as a kid, it was uh, a lot more difficult for me to find sort of this balance of where I felt comfortable in my body. Um, I used to bind pretty much every day, almost to the point of it being unhealthy. Um, and <laughs> and it was uh, it was one of those things where I felt like I was trying to perform transness almost, and it started to get to a point where it was definitely not comfortable for me to keep existing that way. And I sort of slowly got more comfortable with my body because it's more about. I realized I thought like to myself, it's more about being who I am and having the people that I care about know who I am rather than sort of presenting this idea which was what I used to do a lot more when I was younger because currently I identify as a, as a boy for most of my life and then I'm comfortable with sort of pushing the boundaries of being feminine without uh, feeling like I have to identify as female. I will say being gender fluid is often straddling this interesting line between wanting to be visible and wanting to be invisible but also being hyper visible and being invisible at the same time. Living in the South, there aren't a lot of resources. I will admit gender identity has been a kind of recent development for me. I wasn't really given a lot of education or knowledge about trans people, about what it's like to be trans. So I think that has really informed my experience up to this point. But right now, I'm in this weird phase of experimentation, I think, of trying to figure out how to be visible, but how to also stay safe. So I think right now it's just a game of finding resources that are available to the trans community, especially in a place where it's not always safe for us. As I moved on into junior high school, uh, my mother went to work for the first time in my life, and uh, the, and she worked at the school that my brother and I went to, and and the the days that I was able to stay home because I was ill, well, those were the days that I started the exploring my mother's closet and and her 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 dresser drawers and what have you, and and um, again that 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 did add to my confusion, but it added to my relief. I think there's a lot of fear behind exploring anything other than the normative and um, I know I personally deal with a lot of internalized transphobia and I know I'm not alone in that so I think it's very scary to try to think of yourself as anything other than what you've been told you are your whole life. When I was five and a half I realized who I was. When I was, or I realized there was a difference, when I was 22 years old and studying in, uh, to be a dentist at the University of Louisville, I was in the medical school library and the dysphoria, now we didn't call it dysphoria back then, it was just confusion, uh, was, had gripped me again and 
So I got into the to the, to the card catalog. We didn't have Google back in those days. Got the card catalog, and and started looking for words that might have some meaning. And I stumbled upon the word transsexual. And when I read that, now that was at the age of 22. I read that, um, and, and I read that description of a woman trapped in a man's body. And all of a sudden the light bulb came on for me because it's what I had experienced all my life. But it, by that time, I was already married and had a three-month-old baby girl. So I just had to push that secret as far back in my mind. Forty-five years later, at the age of 67, I began my transition. Well, the process was not, for me, wasn't, wasn't exactly difficult. I mean, I, I was already well established. Um, in, in my, you know, in, in my home, my now my wife did leave. Uh, she discovered my private diary, my private journal that I kept, and ended our marriage. But she's my best friend today. As a matter of fact, I talked to her today. And um, but uh, but it didn't start out that way. But she left, and this was not my first wife. It was my third wife, in fact. And and the, the difficult part came when I was alone again. You know, I had been, been married, and I, I did lose my family. My children and grandchildren I haven't had any contact with in nearly seven years. Uh, a little over six, about six and a half. And, and that hurts very bad. Um, but, but other than that, the, the transition went very well. I was financially secure, and I was able within 14 months of beginning my transition, I completed my transition, and during that during that period of time, um, I, I I began living as a woman right then, and, and I never had a break in it. You know, got into the uh, hormone replacement therapy, and that's very, very important because because you you have to you have to live that way for a year. You have to be on hormones for a year before they'll even talk to you about uh, reassignment uh, surgery. So for me, it was not difficult. I have a wonderful support group through my church, and they're the chosen family that uh, that I have today. And um, it, it's been a relatively easy uh, part of my life, other than the loss of my children and grandchildren. Well, some trans people who live down here are uh, Christian. And it's more difficult for them because they're told their entire lives that they're an abomination. And that if they even know about trans people, then it it's difficult for them to understand who they are. And some people never even come to that conclusion until they're much older. Um, much like myself, I didn't know that I was non-binary until I got into college. I've kind of played around with the idea since I was like 14, but most people around me didn't want to even talk about it. So it was difficult until I came here and had more open-minded people. I think that if you come from like maybe a background that has certain maybe particularly rigid beliefs about gender roles, then that can give you a lot of shame in terms of transitioning. You may not know, first of all, where you start, because like I said, there's like this lack of visible resources, but also because you feel like it's something you shouldn't do. Like it's such a taboo subject that transition requires exploring, but you don't necessarily want to delve into that. I mean, there's a part of you that does, but there's a part of you that feels this burden of guilt for wanting to explore something like that because it's so taboo. So I think it's a lot of trying to reconcile past mindsets, I think, or mindsets you've grown into with things that would make you comfortable and happy in the future. I think um, religion is a big thing. Uh, the South is very religious, and religion typically doesn't go well with being trans. Um, and also there's a lot of gender gender roles, even like the girls who ride in their trucks, you know, wear their camo, whatever. It's pink camo. It's pink hunting rifles. So, you know. 
religion sort of teaches women that they can only be uh, one or two, one or two things, and teaches men that they can only be one or two things, and that you have to be those things. And being trans, it's sort of like wondering if, like I remember when I was still kind of Christian, like I sort of a. a subscribed to Christianity and went to church and all of that kind of stuff. But um, I thought that like, if I was, if I truly was trans, then like, I was just gonna have to jump from one extreme to the other. And I know that's not true now, but it definitely feels that way. Cause in the South, you have very like explicit gender roles. The church that I belong to, the Baptist Church of the Covenant, it's in downtown Birmingham. It's a very diverse uh, church. Uh, it began 50 years ago uh, when the uh, pastoral staff and 255 members walked out of a Southern Baptist church uh, in protest of having denied uh, admittance or membership to an African-American mother and her daughter. And my church was, was birthed at that time. Since then, it, it's, we, 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 we've had a woman pastor uh, senior pastor. Uh, the most recent permanent pastor was a, was a woman. Um, we have uh, the LGBT community is well represented. I was accepted. They never had to get to know my other persona. Now I refer to that as my twin brother. They never had to get to know my twin brother because uh, I attended four or five times visiting as my twin brother but the pastor and the associate pastor, the only two that, that knew who I was and knew what my story was. And then after about five weeks or six weeks, I started attending as Elaine. And that's how the congregation knows me. And I'm very close with, with so many of those people. And I love them. They, they, like I say, they're my family. I was, I was well accepted. And we have, we have two transgender children in the church today. One's, one's teenage and the other one is 11 years old. And they, uh, they, they are accepted very well. So being in the South, like my mother and I are not from here, we're from California. So, and she's part of the LGBTQ community as well. But one of her uh, main points when I started to sort of like realize that I might be trans, I came to her and told her that I thought I was a boy. And she told me, in more words than this, but sort of, it's not safe for you to be that here. And I want you to think about it harder because I don't want you to experience the kind of like pushback that you might get from this. Um, especially cause I was so young, she was mostly worried about my safety, but that also like knowing that I wasn't, that I might not be accepted or that I might experience like homophobia, transphobia, that kind of thing it scared me and sort of like pushed me back into the closet a little bit. Very uh, closeted to everyone, friends included sometimes. Um, very scary to come out to anyone at all. <laughs> There's a lot to do with how you come out and who you come out to that can be very difficult. Um, you don't want to come out to the wrong people, but you don't want to stay in the closet the whole time. But it's kind of difficult in the South because um, there's a bunch of like, we live in the Bible Belt, so there's like religious zealots and stuff like that. Um, or people who consider themselves to be part of like a conservative party or something like that. And it's difficult to navigate around those people who want to do you harm and those who kind of just don't want to see any other way than what has been taught to them for generations. So it's um, more of the fact that you have to try to believe in yourself and have a stronger will than most people who don't live in the South because most people don't have to deal with that kind of issue. I honestly don't know if I plan on leaving or staying. I think part of me is dreamy and wants to explore and see what's out there, but there's also another part of me that considers this home. As strange as that is, I think, because of the ways that I have had to reconcile the possibility of discrimination, 
but I think that if I were to stay here, I'd want to hopefully aid in the cause of making things better for trans people in the South. I think that's one thing I would really want to do if I stayed here. I plan on staying, but I also plan on working in an online environment, so it's not like I have to interact much outside. <laughs> I've lived in Alabama my entire life, um, and at this point it's just getting old. So um, I plan to stay here just to get my degree and to watch my little brother and my little sister graduate and try to stay around for my new baby brother's childhood for as long as I can. But Al Alabama and the South in general, just I don't see it in my future. Most of my life I planned on leaving, but, and I still do, I have this uh, sort of like, from childhood dream of like traveling around the world and living in other places but uh i feel like there's worth in staying as well because for a long time i just kind of wanted to escape the south because i felt like it was unwelcoming but i have found a lot of support here there are people um who accept and support and are good allies in the south and for a while i just felt like it was kind of a lonely place to be but now it feels more important to me to be able to stay and help People. Like, I'm going into an education career, so I think even though it's not every, every trans person's job to educate other people about being trans, I still think it's important to have people who are willing to do that, and I'm one of those. <laughs> or is there anything you would like to say to a younger trans person who's living in the South? Uh, yeah, um, just being trans is beautiful, no matter where you're from, and no matter who's around you and what they try to tell you, you just, you gotta believe in yourself and you have to be yourself. On the one hand, be proud of yourself because it's so hard. It's so, so hard. Keep going, keep living, keep exploring, but at the same time, be safe. Keep yourself safe. Protect yourself, your identity, your heart. Do whatever you need to do to be comfortable, but to also be safe. So keep your head up, but take care of yourself. I feel like um, it's sort of very easy to feel like you're not right and that your gender isn't something that you have a choice in. And it's very easy to feel like just because people are concerned for your safety um, that you shouldn't be who you want to be or that you should like take a step back and try and maybe like limit yourself in terms of expression and uh, being but it's definitely way more rewarding to be yourself and damn the consequences uh, as long as you're being you know obviously safe about it and within reason but it definitely was damaging as a kid to hear that someone was worried about me and think, well, then maybe I can just be myself, but less. So try not to limit yourself on that. I would say just be safe, be careful, um, and be open. We deserve to be who we are. I am the same person within my heart, within my mind, as I was so many decades ago. And if, if what I would say to, to a, a, a senior person as I, if that desire becomes very strong, so strong that you don't think you're going to make it, then it's time for you to start living your reality and living your truth. For young people, I, I'm, I'm happy that young people today are able to express their identity more than I was able to express mine. What I would say to you is that if you have the, if you have the love of your family, the support of your family, and you have others that will support you, it's not going to be easy in life, but it's going to be easier. And, and uh, we were never promised things to be exactly easy, but it will be easier for you because you will have a group to, to help you through the process. 
The navigation is, is, is so important that you stay on the right track. Uh, you don't shortcut. If, if, if the protocols tell you that you need to do this, this, and this, in that order, do this, this, and this, in that order. Don't think you can skip the one in the middle and jump right to the end. Um, I, I wish that when, when I started, I would have liked to have gone immediately, within a month, and, and say, I did it. But that wasn't possible. So I followed what I call the roadmap. I had a roadmap. Uh, fortunately, I was older. Uh, I learned a long time ago that instant gratification isn't always the best thing and that patience it, it, and you will make it and um, you just have to be you have to do things to stay safe uh, you need to not go places that are going to get you in trouble and that that's primarily for the for the young th those that are a little bit younger than I am and what have you. We've, we've had similar life experiences. My life experiences uh, are different than another person's as theirs is different than mine. And, and, and because we all have differences. But um, you've got to be yourself. And you've, got, you've got to do... You have to control your happiness. You cannot let anyone else control your happiness.